time we've baited a canal section where there's rumours of this really big carp. Um, so I've baited one spot, I was planning on baiting two spots, um, but basically for all the canals in France, the, the, the government has got a bit of a drive to create um, cycle paths along all of them, which is lovely for the cyclists, but at the moment they're in the middle of construction on the area that I wanted to bait, um, and it's knackered it. Uh, there's JCBs everywhere, um, they've, they've dug up all the margins, it's, it's absolutely horrible. So the fish will have moved to a different spot. Um, it's <sighs> debated, it's just probably not worth looking around for them to try and bait on the, it, it, on the off chance that I'm going to stop in here on the way back. So we're going to head south now. Um, couple of hours maybe three hours drive to where I was planning on going um, and then we'll see where it takes us to be honest with you um, so yeah we, ba we we managed to find one area that I was comfortable with clarity wasn't great um, and, I, and, and we're on a bank holiday Monday so no one was doing the Sunday night which is good news there's no locals around so it, that would suggest it's being kept quite quiet um, there were just three guys at the spot that I've just looked at with the SP caps on so they're obviously looking around but anyway anyway we're gonna head south now over and out So we're on Tuesday, um, late spring, early summer. We got down here yesterday, last night at about 7 p.m. I had a skirt about, there was an English guy actually in this spot and he's caught absolutely loads, he's been slaughtering them. Um, and so I, I could have jumped in there for an hour last night, it, it, it's a no night fishing lake. But I decided to just have a boat about and look for them. A few jumped on the other side, on the narrower side of this lake, but um, would feel that the majority of the fish are this side at the moment. But they've had several, they've had a good week of pressure before I've arrived. So at some point this week, they probably will move round. So anyway, I've jumped in here. I got over here before first light just to, just to secure the swim. Um, and the rule, the, the rule is 6, 6 a.m. you get the rods out. So there are fish jumping and no surprise straight away I've got to take. Um, and my, all, my trips all seem to start badly. Um, I didn't think there were any snags. Dave mentioned that there might be a fallen tree out there but he's not had any problems with it. Straight away this fish runs straight through these branches and I can see the branches um, that it, it once, once it got tethered up, up to about that much leg core, the fish obviously came off and I could see my rig wrapped around the branch in about four meters of water. Um, so yeah, gutter, losing one straight away. Um, it's a, so, so anyway, that rod's now not back leaded, just to keep that, the line that much higher and a heavier lead just so it definitely ejects straight away and the fish comes up in the water. But yeah, there's a few about. I, I, did, I really did disturb it out there trying to get the um, rig back off this snag. Um, failing that, and I've disturbed it. But I'm fishing real close. I'm no more than 60, 70 yards out, which is where they're jumping. The one on the left's a little bit further out, but the fish were largely to that right hand side. But you know how it is. It's just you're learning about the swim, you're learning how to fish it. Yeah, there's a lot of weed out there, so just, you know, it takes a fair bit of time just finding the drop. So I've GPSed up a few spots. There's two anglers out in front of me and one to my right. So there's four in this main bowl. Well, we've got six days ahead of us. On the way down here, I had all the intentions to fish a canal further north from here. 
uh, but because this was so quiet, the word on the street that this was quiet, you know, I thought I'd had it with this place. I've probably mentioned this before, but I fished it in 2006, and out of all of those carp, there's only one of those left, and it's the real big one, um, the grey one. That was one of the 18 back then that I had at upper 40s. Um, I think Nick Kelly had it on the front of a Cart World magazine a year later at low 50s. And now Danny Fairbrass has got it on the front of the video over 70 pounds. So that's been out, that was out last week, that fish. And three or four other 30 kilo carp were out. But I'm not gonna let that put me off. There's a lot of carp in here. And yesterday, a lot of the small males were getting caught. So fingers crossed. We'll give it, we'll give it the morning and see what happens. It's about nine o'clock now. Eight, eight thirty is now. But yeah, that's enough talking over and out for now. Pike anglers, always a problem on these public lakes. They're just drifting into my swim now. I guess they're probably 40 yards. There we are, they've noticed. That's not a bad first fish. Um, yeah, probably about 18, 19 kilos. Well happy with that. Okay, wonderful to start with a 40 pounder. This is, I think it was just under 41. So it was nice to get a feel for them with the first fish. Yeah, it's crapping out someone else's bait, which is interesting. So someone's obviously putting bait in. This is a red bait, I'm on live system. Right, let's see if we can hold her up. You'll see that she's carrying a little bit of spawn there. But it's that time of year. There we are. Wonderful start. Look at her. Absolutely beautiful fish. <sighs> Mega. So they really concentrated the carp in a very specific area. And it was no surprise that it was the same rod that I lost the one on earlier. Yeah, mega result that. Wonderful carp. Okay. Lovely. Common, I reckon mid 30. Okay. Wow, look at that. Absolutely immaculate common. Um, like I said, they're concentrated in one spot. They were jumping, so I put the camera on it. I was fairly confident that it was going to go off within the next hour. Cool. It's popping back. I've just had a couple of bleeps. Um, yeah. Probably about 35, I think. Yeah, I better get that. joke. 
beautiful. Um, the fish are coming in a real confined area of no more than 20 meters squared, possibly even smaller than that. Um, yeah, maybe 15 square meter patch out there at about 60, 70 yards. There's nothing showing or nothing's being caught around the bowl apart from that tiny little spot. Um, so, you know, putting more and more bait on it, spreading it out all over the area and um, inducing some feeding. These are turbocharged, uh, or rather um, testosterone charged males. Um, fought very, very hard this fish. Hopefully I got it on film. It's just starting to rain. It's just very quickly. Superb fish. Right, let's go. just had three in the last hour and I've then just had a major um, bird's nest with the with the motor where I had a take while I was doing the other rod and anyway anyway this is the biggest of them which is 47 pounds for just well, for, near enough 48 but I can't believe I'm trying to rush a bloody 48 pounder but um, there are just so many fish in front of me can't believe it. it's a male as well it just fought so hard I hope I got it on camera yep, just under 48 pounds look at that that is what we come to this lake for my goodness this was the fourth of six um, I've got a couple of upper 30s to show you amazing fish I've never I'm rushing around but tomorrow someone may well come in here before I'm gonna get in here at three o'clock and just obviously put the rods out at six but you never know there's a lot of a lot of anglers on here watching this so you've got to strike while the iron's hot oh my god here we are. Let's get you back. It's a good run, isn't it? And that is why we rust things sometimes. Because if that, if I hadn't rust things, I would never have caught this magnificently long 57 pound common. My God. Okay. Look at that, what trip made 57 pound common. get it in that one. All three cameras going at the same time. Oh, amazing. I don't quite know how many more years I'm going to be able to fish this hard. We are fishing as hard as we can. 
Mm, love you. I love this lake. An hour to go before Rod's in. Okay. And last, but by no means least, there we are. There we are. Right, that's it done for the day. I've got to start packing up. Okay, Wednesday morning, um, 20 past seven. So I've got the rods out about half an hour ago. Um, three rods, bang on the money. It is such a small spot out there. It must be, I said 20 yesterday. I think it's about 15 meters wide um, by about five meters back. So basically yesterday with all of those carp, um, it was noticeable that the more live system I put in, the more takes I was getting. Um, it definitely brought them onto the feed yesterday afternoon. Absolutely, definitely. Oh, carbs just roll on the spot. Come on. You, you, you question whether or not they move off. With the, pre with the amount that was caught yesterday, you think they might move off the spot. But that was banging on the left hand rod that night, so that, that fish. So. There is definitely fish. So anyway, we had all those fish, the live system brought them on. And it's important to note that this is last year's live system. It's shelf life, but I froze it over the winter. Um, and it is doing the business. Uh, yesterday I did 10 kilos, um, just in the day. And that was just, no, no pre-baiting, that was 10 kilos from, from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. So I put three kilos more back on it. Um, and it, is def it definitely induced more bites yesterday, definitely. So we've got three rods on there. I haven't bothered putting them out any anywhere else. It's just too much to manage with the boat and you get more than one take at once. We'll see, I, if, if I see some jump into the left, I did see one show to the left, I will put a fourth out there. But, um, no, it's, it's too much. Um, I'm getting through the back leads. Um, I have got some captive ones somewhere, but I can't find them at the moment. And of course, when you're, I, I, I just put tiny little, little Arles, um, are they Arsley bombs? Tiny little ledger weights, just on a, um, a, a snap link. And when you're playing them, they're jangling around and invariably they'll, they'll fall off. So I'm gonna have to try and find those, those captive back leads. I probably had about five, six hours sleep last night. It, was, it wasn't it was good sleep, but it was sleep. I feel quite a lot better this morning. I needed to get a load more water in me yesterday. I was very dehydrated. A um, load more water, a couple of beers, just to celebrate the, the 57 pound common. So I went back to the car park, sorted a few bits and pieces out as you do, and then we're back in, we're back in play. So yeah, fingers, fingers crossed we'll get a take. Fingers crossed for a bigger one. It's important to note that I would never normally come back here. Have, having done done a bit of time on here so long, 15 years ago, it, every time I've, I've, I did a couple of nights on one of the summer trips, um, well, I had a couple of 30s, but, and that, that was probably 2011 or 12. And since then, the place is just so busy. You, you know, there's a lot of good anglers out in the world now. You know, you, you're basically sharing those fish, and you, there's nothing worse than seeing fish show and know that someone's over that. So I tend to keep away from these. But while it's quiet, um, this is a prime opportunity, absolute prime opportunity to fish the more pressured lakes. I'm even tempted to go up to one in the Alps that's really pressured, um, just for a couple of nights, see if I can bag one of the biggies there. But we're going to stay here for now. It's probably my best ever chance of a 30 kilo carp. Um, also depends on how many other anglers arrive.
God. Yes. That's a good one, is that? <clears throat> this has gone 50 pounds and 50 pounds and 8 ounces. Amazing. First fish of this morning. I expect it to take a bit longer because of how much because of how much bait I put in last night. Oh my god, there she is. Amazing. Possibly the day of big females. So we've got to be on our game today. Okay, so um, we're late morning, coming on for lunchtime. Um, a big fish has just shown on the spot. Um, maybe my side by about 10, 15 meters. Um, they're definitely on the live system, 100%. Um, I've just uh, basically, after that, after that 50, I replaced the two rods and I just got them absolutely bang on the money everything is absolutely confident. I've wound the other rods in, that might sound stupid, but that's really the only spot that's been producing and, and with a steady feed of, of 18 mil live system, there must have been a few of the bigger carp that have fed on that now. Um, and to be honest, going out and trying to find spots in the weed can take time and the last thing I want to be doing is leaving my rods. I've got two on the money, that's absolutely fine. Um, I don't want to be off my rods for any length of time because there's that bloody snag tree out there as well. So um, yeah, we're looking absolutely bang on for it. I feel really confident that I could get one of the big, the big ones. This is possibly my best chance. Here we are, we're away, look at that. No, line by it. They don't come along many times, but I reckon today is possibly my best chance of one of the real big ones. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen very shortly. Whether it'll be a big one, we don't know. Okay, well, literally the rod just went off just after I mentioned about it and we've got a lovely comment. Just a little bit of a ripple on the water makes it so much more difficult to find the spots, the tiny little spots. Um, so I've just been out and spent a bit of time um, I have disturbed it a little bit out there, which isn't ideal. Like I said, there was there was a bigger carp than that jumping on that spot um, just before I got that take, much bigger. I've just got to keep working at it and hope that one of those real big ones falls foul. In the next five, you would expect there to be a massive one. I think, well, we'll see, we'll see anyway. Anyway, over and out for now. Okay, just to set the scene Thursday morning, um, we've got three rods out, two over the, um, over the money, where every take has come from, and then I've got one on a sand patch straight out, no more than 15, 20 meters from the other rods. Um, we'll keep a third rod, um, a fourth rod available if we see any shows. Um, and then we've got another rod just um, spare with 25 kilo braid on um, 
braids the one on here with the weed it's so thick already and we're, and we're only in um, early summer late spring early summer um, I slept from 10 till 5 and then I spent half an hour just in the other section of the lake watching and I saw I saw a couple of good shows so it's one of those where I'm, I'm not going to move from here until I stop getting takes um, because you're basically starting from scratch again um, even if there are showing carp um, and there is the possibility that the, the commons I'm oh, sorry the commons that the males um, will have moved out of here but there's the odd female left the bigger carp um, that's the theory anyway so um, we're certainly not going to move until we um, until we stop getting action but there are carp on the other side now um, so and, and I've seen where they've been jumping so I've got a fair idea I've, I've, I echoed it on my first day here it's very weedy so take a bit of time to find some clear spots incidentally on the right hand rod which is closest to the snag tree I've, I've actually gone towards the snag tree put a big back lead down and then come this way so so it's almost like a bit of a dog leg we're going well we're going out 70 yards and then to the left 10 yards so it's like 10 70 with the view that when that fish um, bolts um, it's going to feel an initial bit of pressure from the snag tree and in theory run the other way I mean ideally what's going through your mind at the moment is popping a bottle up off the snag tree and then tying the line to the bottle via some elastic bands which I've got um, I mean that would be the ideal scenario the snag tree is 30 meters away from where I'm fishing um, it's just if they kite right um, and, and two, two out of 12 have kited right and I've lost them but using a bottle on the surface basically means um, there's, uh, I'm not very far up but there are two tiny little swims just sort of the next 50 meters up from me and everyday pike anglers are fishing from those spots with spinners so yeah that's not really a viable option let's see how we go with this um, and yeah I'll keep, I'll keep you posted now that was just 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 one more point on that um, I didn't put any bait in last night so the first morning I didn't put any bait in and I started getting takes quite quickly um, yesterday I put three kilos out on the spot um, and it took a couple of hours to get a bite but the first bite was a real good one so um, I just wondered I, I, I'm not sure that they're actually feeding at night anyway so I think a lot of the three kilos were sitting there at first light when I put the rods out so at so this point um, just a few uh, well, several big handfuls we'll see how we go Very big fish that one. It's nearly done, he's nearly ready. Come on. Oh come on. Come.
Ah. It's stuff. Right. So 27 kilos. Um, 59 English pounds. Maybe 59.5. I thought it was bigger. You got that okay? When I, just when you think all the fish have moved out of the area, well, the small small males go out, the big females come in. Honestly, thought this might be one of the real big ones. issues with pike anglers, nothing ever changes. He's getting quite close to my right hand rods. Has he got one? Or is he in the weed?
okay, yeah. Make sure you get me all in, yeah? Amazing. So 28 kilos, so this is 50, um, 60, 62 English pounds. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. That looked okay, did it? What a session, quite unbelievable. I'll go through the details later. This is the time to get the video right. Concentrate on the fish. There we are. And hold, hold it still for one minute. Okay. okay. See the red, the red rouge? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, all good. Okay, right. Okay, it's Thursday evening, um, 10 to nine. So, rods have got to be in in the next 10 minutes. Quite an unbelievable day. Um, oh, it's just unbelievable. 59 and 62. I'm going to give a full update tomorrow. It's actually quite cold. We've got quite a strong northerly wind and, and I'm shivering. Um, I'm just so tired. Um, even though I've only had two fish today, the day has been hectic with sorting stuff out. Um, every time I try and sleep, one of the rods registers some sort of a line bite. Um, couple of shows this evening as well which is a good sign for tomorrow but I'm gonna wind in now um, yeah and see if I can get some sleep ready to rock and roll again tomorrow so it's Friday morning the lakes actually got very busy now we've got one um, Gregory down to my right Anthony over there that's helped me with the photos and the videoing of the big ends and then we've got Luke Luca and Anthony over there all French anglers all seem very nice so that in this bowl area we've now got five anglers um, but they've just had one over there and I've just had one on my left hand rod so maybe the fish are coming this way a bit um, lovely little um, beautiful scale one this one really happy with it not very big but The amount of fish that we're catching, one of the biggins has got to come out, um, one of the real biggins. So um, we've got to keep at it, we've got to keep on our game, um, even if it is busier. The bait has been established on these spots for a few days now, irrespective of the, most of the carp moving off. I'm sure some of the biggins will have had some live system. I'm going to keep applying the bait in the hope that just one of the biggins right well I'm pretty sure one of one or two of them have arrived and have eaten on the spots already we're in tune with it at the moment we've just got to hope that a big one comes along this is a real problem for whatever reason they just seem intent on going right over my rods they're probably 30 or 40 yards past my bait at the moment they're casting within 20 meters 20 yards of that rods so if I was a carp I wouldn't want to feed with them about not good um, it's 11 30 on Friday morning um, so so I had the small one then I see a carp jump it rolled and then I didn't think too much of it um, it was a big carp but it was relatively close to my right hand rod anyway and then it rolled again my way a little bit <clears throat> I had a chod rig set up, 14 mil live system on good old faithful from back in the day, size five stiff riggers. That's all I ever used to use on a, on a stiff link pop-up. Um, whacked a chod out, out to it, 
it landed about 10 yards short, wound it in, whacked it out again, it landed bang on the patch of bubbles, um, followed by maybe 30 baits, 30 18 mil live system over the top of the throwing stick. All went real accurate, it was, it was perfect. Anyway, I then get the take, lose the fish on the snag, which is mo no more than 20 metres away from where that happened, maybe 30 metres away. T I thought, well, maybe um, the chod rig might, you know, produce something this afternoon. As I'm bringing the rig back without a blimmin' hook link, um, the chod rig rod just starts nodding. Um, and I thought, oh, I've got a flipping tench on it. Guaranteed tench. Hit into it. Big cut. Um, so we've got 51 on on the chod hook, and it fought so hard. I got it. All, hopefully, I got it all on video. But because that rod is high, that's near the snag, it went through that line. It was a mad, mad battle, and it all held. So pleased with the um, hook hold, and we've got a 51. I can't believe it. 23 kilo. Okay, it's um, quarter past 12, lunchtime on Friday. The carp are back in numbers. They started showing um, all over the place, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, it's looking good. Um, got three rods out. I've got the chod rig waiting to go if one of them is within casting distance. Um, I'm even tempted just to take it out and drop it by the boat from the boat wherever the carp are rolling irrespective of whether there's any weed that one landed completely soft in thick weed um, where I had that fish there was no doubt it was right over the really thick stuff and, and it went off so yeah we've got three foot three foot of leg core for it to slide up and down um, I think it's going to be a winner for the fourth rod Three rods, three rods on the spots, plenty. We'll keep a fourth rod as aroma. Fish were, fish were showing over that rod. Um, uh, they didn't look massive fish, to be honest. Um, we've got a lovely male mirror, um, mid 30, mid 30 range. It's just... Okay. There we are. Beautiful. Monsieur. Monsieur. <whistles> You've got it, mate. No, no, you've got it, you've, monsieur. You've, monsieur, you have my line, La Ligna. No, 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 no.
Okay, wait. Okay. Okay, so 63 pound common. We will try and hold her up. My God, this trip is just getting better and better. Look at that common. Took a double live system snowman on the rod nearest the snag. Incroyable. Then we did to me commune. Incroyable. Just quickly. Okay. 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 This will be a 30 kilo fish in the autumn time. It's not carrying much at the moment. Look at the length of that. Unbelievable. Okay, right, that's enough. Okay. Come on, sweet. C'est bon. Oui. Let's, get a, let's get a little bit of her going back. She's secreting live system all over them. All over the unhooking mat. Right, okay, okay. So, um, notice we've got the lucky Reebok top on, top on from 1994. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. C'est bon. C'est bon. Okay. Allez, ça roule. Okay, it's um. Oh, big fish just rolled on my right hand rod. As if the day couldn't get any better, Dave Akerman, who lives local to here, is coming down with um, kebab and chips and beer tonight. So, so the day, it's, it's Friday evening, we've got kebab, chips, beer and good company for um, a bit of time. Um, and I can reflect on another 60 pounder. So, um, two 28 kilos, a 27 and a 26, a couple of 23s, um, mad, four or five 50s, a couple of 60s. Um, I mean, this is just ridiculous. There's not really anyone else catching. They've had one up to the left, um, this first thing this morning, and that's all they've had. And the two, Greg and Anthony, down to the right, haven't had anything. So yeah, absolutely amazing. I'm gonna get another one, there's no doubt about it. But it's definitely to do with working the swim, establishing the bait, keeping, keeping the rods working, keeping them topped up. I've had swimmers go into the line, I've had rowers, I've had two or three mares with the flipping motor where the back lead, for whatever reason, the back lead wasn't as deep as it should have been. Um, basically, we've got a northerly going that way. I think it's a northerly. Um, and it, uh, at this time of year, you get all of the seeds coming off the dandelions and all the trees all the white fluffy stuff that collects on your line particularly on the braid and so even underwater there's also a load of this um, blanket weed that's coming down and that's catching on the line and it's bringing the bat leads up and that one um, I went out and caught caught up with the line just close by here and absolutely nailed the motor you know round and round um, while, I, while I was playing, I did that while I was playing the 63. Fortunately, always keep a pair of scissors in the life jacket and another pair of scissors with your rigs and your leads um, in the boat. Um, because I was able to just grab the scissors, snip that line. Um, it did mean I'd left the best part of 60 yards of braid out there. But more importantly, it meant I could land the common. And you'll see from the footage, assuming I get all the footage home safely, um, you'll see that the big common got heavily weeded. And then the moment it came free from the, um, the moment it came free from the weed, it literally, it was the, it was the worst fight of all of them. It just came up shaking its head, um, and I just needed to use the the motor just to get a bit close to the fish in this wind and I managed to scoop him up but um, quite unbelievable so then that happened and then following that I just started sorting everything out and then um, the right hand rod ripped um, 
the next dim from the right rips off um, and I go out in the boat and that fish tangles up with the braid that I snipped on the rod that's out there with the 60 yards of braid sitting out there and, and so so basically I'm drifting down this is happening I'm all tangled up again the scissors came to my rescue I was able to cut away all the one out there I just put the rod down drifted down um, wound in the one with the 60 yards on and got the lead and got the rig back but by the time I'd done that I drifted over the snag tree and of course the fishes had gone into the snag tree um, and, and so I'm towing myself at this point the motor's out of action um, because some of the braid from the 60 yard oh my god big fish just jumped over the right hand rod um, we're just going to get a take on that rod I will turn it round in a minute that was a good fish um, I still haven't had my 30 kilo no personal best yet um, so so anyway, dragged it back to the snag tree. Would you believe it? I've got a 39 pound mirror just sitting under one of the branches. And he, I just pulled and pulled and pulled and he came out. Um, he stripped the coated braid all the way back. Um, but fortunately the size two continental mugger on that rod held absolutely rock solid hook hold. Um, we'll go through the rig talk at some point because I've, I've had um, I think 18 carp now and, and it's really just a case of getting whatever rigs you've got available all those hours spent mucking about indoors with rigs that you probably never use all of them have come out from the rig board um, I don't get to go fishing much so I do a lot of time fiddling around with bits and bobs at home just dreaming about coming to places like this and um, all of those rigs have come out all the strong ones um, and they've all gone on and they've all pre performed absolutely superbly every every pattern of hook I haven't had any hook pulls I've just lost three in the, to the snag tree um, but anyway it's all it's all gone brilliantly all the fish have come to snowman's um, with a shrink wrap you don't even need to use shrink wrap the, the poisson chat in here that used to be incredibly abundant and active I don't know whether it's because we've had a cold spring or whether or not they're just not here anymore. But um, no, and, and basically we've just had a shrink wrapped 18 mil with either half an 18 mil pop up over the top or half a um, or, or a whole 14 mil pop live system pop up. I've not done anything with any colours. We're keeping match the hatch with all of the live system that's going in. Um, there are tench in here. I've had one tench. And I know that there are other nuisance species, so we want to we want to have the hook baits as similar as possible. Um, I do like to balance my baits just so that the rig, as you're dropping it from the boat, the rig goes to the side. Um, but yeah, it's performed absolutely superbly. Um, listen, I've, I've got fish on on that right hand rod, so I'm just going to turn that round. Okay, nice start to the morning. Um, God, it took me right over the other side of the lake. These these males are just so lively at the moment. Yeah, so 
so beautiful 46 pound um, mirror lovely scaled light Wonderful looking car. Oh, lovely. Amazing. After another mirror in the mid 30 range, I received a fast take on my left hand rod. What followed will stay with me for the rest of my life. Excuse the pun, but it is a flipping fish of a lifetime. I can't believe it. I can't actually believe I've had the privilege of catching this carp. This is just something else. I'm gonna have to put it down, mate. Yeah, go for it. Wow. Showtime. Showtime. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, God, damn, this is a little bit too far out. Maybe I have done it. Maybe I have done it. We're on. What? What? Reeps. Just to try it. <laughs> I think we should probably be about this. Oh, that's the 
one. Yeah, of course. Okay. okay, back down to earth with a 47. Um, this fish ripped off while we were photoing the 77. Um, and we, there's nothing really you can do about it. Um, this is just ridiculous fishing. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, there she is. Wonderful carp. Very quickly do the other side. Lovely carp, that one. It's one of, one of the old ones by the looks of it. He's got a bit of cataracts on that eye. Wonderful, wonderful. As evening approached, the action accelerated with a string of 30s and 40s taking over the baited area. Youngster getting taught how to clonk. Calling it a day. Okay, lovely start to the morning. Um, on Sunday morning, we leave tonight. Um, literally lost count of. How many fish? I think I've had about 28, 20 fish, 28, 29 carp now. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, but this first fish of the morning, which is fairly average size, only 47 pounds. Oh, oh, whacked me in the chin. Chinned me, didn't you? You big fat carp. fish aren't really, I, I would be expecting the females to be holding more spawn, but they're not, they're, everything seems, we did have a very cold, okay, there she is, there she is, lovely. Try and drop this for this bloke. Bonsoir. Wait. Okay, merci. Okay, it's um, it's lunchtime. It's 12, 12 15 noon on Sunday. Um, we're in wind down now. We're leaving tonight. Um, this morning has we've, we had the one forty seven quite early on. And then there's just been pike anglers all over the lake. Um, just cooking up some noodles blind. We're down to our last rations. Anywhere between sort of 11 and 6 is big girl time. So um, I actually think I've got another ch a chance of another really good fish this afternoon. Um, it's gone quiet now. The pike anglers have gone. I've just redone all the rods because of the amount of spinners that have hit my line or swimmers. I've had a swimmer, a pike boat and, and a, a, a bankside spinner angler hit the lines. I don't think they moved the lead but, but just to be safe I've redone all the rods, rebaited everywhere so it's absolutely perfect for this afternoon. There were a couple of shows over the rods earlier, there's no doubt some of that bait had been eaten if not all of it. So. Um, We've got, we've, now we've redone everything, we're, we're happy again. 
we're back leaded up, we've got a good chance in the next couple of hours. One of the rods is going to go, no doubt about it. Double takes were commonplace but on this occasion the fish had been running for a full 10 minutes and had kited so far right from the left hand side of the swim that the back lead in the near margin had crossed with the back lead on the central rod. It took another 5 minutes of untangling these back leads before I was able to go out after the fish. Six minutes left on that to do four fish, it's never going to happen. I knew it was going to kick off when the, all the pike anglers went in for lunch, the carp started feeding and we've had four in a very short space of time. I think all of them are between 40 and 50. So let's start with this one, just very quickly. This is a 40, 43 pound common. There she is. Okay, that's one done. This is a 45 pound mirror. Lovely, I've got two more to show you. This is a good 40 again. I reckon that one's probably about 42. My God, so, so we've had five forties to 49. Um, and just while I was trying to photo the 49, I get another take and we have a 53 common. Van, van Katra Kilo. Best photos, but anyway. Okay, and this was the one before we were rudely interrupted by the big common, biggest common anyway. We have the most magnificent um, plated mirror for 49 pounds. Okay, okay. amazing, thank you very much. The carp just kept on coming on that Sunday afternoon and the session was turning into a bit of an endurance test. I'd lost count of the number of fish I'd caught, somewhere between 32 and 34 across the six day session. Amongst them I've been lucky enough to catch nine forties, six fifties, two sixties and the 77 with an average weight of over 20 kilos. This was, without any shadow of a doubt, a session of a lifetime. Okay, stop over on the way back. It's very early in the morning. My phone's died on me, so I don't know what time. Um, this is where we put a load of bait in. Um, we've literally got the tunnel today, but I put so much bait in here with the view that I was gonna give it a good go. Um, and it, the, the, the bait has been left seven whole days. Um, it was a lot of bait I put in. Um, and, um, and, and I've had four carp. This is just about the best of the four, which is, um, it's like spawned up 35 pound common. Um, beautiful carp. All of them have been commons, one about 30, this one 35, and then two real smaller ones. I might have even had five, you know, 
But anyway, we're at prime focus. Was the, there's a real big carp in this stretch, uh, and that was the prime focus. I had no idea what other fish lived in it, um, and it turns out there's a lot of small commons. So we're going to put this one back, and we're going to try and get our head down because I'm exhausted. Right over now.